Hi there, Emily Midget here with you today on the Pink Fresh Studio YouTube channel. And today I have a video sharing some tips on how to get really bright, vibrant, blended color on colored cardstock. I'm going to be using the Nested Arches uh, Hot Foil Plate and Die, as well as the Celebrate Hot Foil Plate and Die, which I have already uh, hot foiled using some kind of matte platinum. Um, uh, hot foil. Um, and then I'm also going to be using the stencils, stamps, and dies from the Artistic Dahlias stamp set that I illustrated and was released a few weeks ago. I've got Sparkling Rose, Bubblegum, Raspberry Bliss, Coral Reef, Passion Fruit, and Persimmon inks. And then for the foliage, we're going to use Mint, Meadow, and Emerald City. And then, this is the most important part for blending on your colored cardstock, is White Pigment Ink. And I do have a blending brush that is dedicated only to white pigment ink. So now to stamp this uh, large artistic dahlia stamp onto my uh, piece of minty colored cardstock, I do use the outside of my misty lid. I tape, this is a trick that I think Leah Lawson has shared before. Um, you tape your misty down to your work surface, tape your, tape your uh, cardstock down to your work surface, and then use the outside of your lid for your misty to stamp that larger scale stamp onto it. Um, it just gives you a little bit more surface area to work with, and it works really nicely. So I have heat embossed the Artistic Dahlia stamp set onto this panel of misty, of minty, um, minty green cardstock using platinum embossing powder, which works really nicely with the um, metallic platinum ink uh, uh, hot foil that we used for the other two pieces. So now I want to show you why that pigment ink is important. This is just, I have um, blended some coral reef ink onto that uh, minty green cardstock. And you can see on the left is just the coral reef ink by itself on the mint green. And on the right was with that pigment ink underneath. That white pigment ink acts as kind of a barrier between your dye ink and that cardstock. One of the things you have to remember when using colored cardstock is that that colored cardstock will mix with your inks. So the colors that make up that colored cardstock are going to mix with your ink colors and make them not exactly as they are if you would use them with white cardstock. So mint green is made up of white, green, and a little bit of blue. And so if you mix green with orange, that coral reef is mixed, made up of orange and or yellow and red and white. That's how you mix up the colors. It's going back to, you know, color theory 101 from when you were in kindergarten and you figured out which colors mixed together make the secondary colors and tertiary colors. So we've used we've used that white pigment ink to make sure that those colors that would not meld nicely together, that green and that orange, to prevent them from mixing together and making kind of a muddy mess. That white pigment ink acts as a barrier to keep those colors a little bit more true. They're not as true as they would be on uh, just plain white cardstock, but you can see that they are still very vibrant. They're very nice and bright. And so I am with each layer of the stencils for the Artistic Dahlia's stencil set, I am first using the white pigment ink before I blend that bright colorful ink over the top. That white pigment ink just acts as that barrier and helps to keep those colors bright and vibrant. Now for each of these little filler flowers, I do use the brand new quarter inch and half inch um, ink blending tools that Pink Fresh released a little bit ago. And they're really great for doing detail work like this because they are all in one piece on the stencil. And so it's nice to be able to have that control where if I want to make some of those filler flowers a different color, I have that smaller area on the brush that I can control where that color goes a little bit more easily. And you can see that I am just using the, um, again, I'm we're doing the foliage here, and I am 
laying down that initial layer of white pigment ink. I do take a microfiber cloth and kind of wipe the excess ink around the edges off of my stencil just to make sure that it doesn't mix too much with my dye inks because pigment and dye inks aren't the best of friends. So I want to keep my ink pads nice and clean. So I use a microfiber cloth and this is what I use to clean off all of my stencils. I used to use a baby wipe to clean off stencils or a, um, a stamp chamois, but I found that it was leaving um, kind of little pools of liquid around the edges. And so I use my stamp chamois now, or my, my microfiber cloth to clean those off. So you can see I'm just adding a little bit of extra. I'm kind of using a flicking motion to add a little bit of extra shading to some of the detailed layer of stencils. Um, and I'm using on this last one with the Emerald City ink, this is the darkest green ink, I am using a quarter inch brush, again with that little flicking motion to kind of um, make it a little bit uh, more gradual, make the ink blending a little bit more gradual and less um, with the harsh edges. But you can see how beautifully vibrant those colors are on that minty green cardstock. That's not a super light color of cardstock. And those corals and pinks really pop nicely. Otherwise, if we had just blended those onto that um, minty cardstock without that white pigment ink barrier, there would have been quite a bit of muddiness and it would have just been kind of dull. And that white pigment ink helps to keep those colors vibrant. So now we're going to work on uh, die cutting and putting everything together. I die cut the artistic dahlias with the handy dandy one piece die. Now I am uh, die cutting the hot foiled pieces, the um, nested arches and celebrate hot foil plates. And now I am going to use the rounded and braided rectangles die. This was just released um, and I'm going to use the middle size. I'm not going to use the actual die part that cuts out the frame itself. I'm just using the, um, the piercing portion of the die to cut out in the center of my uh, minty green cardstock. This is another one of my monochromatic cards. I love to layer um, colored cardstock on multiple layers so that it gets this really beautiful, um, simple but not look. So we add lots of layers of that minty green cardstock. And I am going to adhere this die cut piece with this little window, this little shine um, die cut window over a piece of coordinating metallic cardstock. And I'm gonna nestle that um, uh, nested arches into the corner where the two 90 degree angles would match. And then I'm just going to add my other components using foam tape. I do use a double layer and a triple layer in a couple of places to make sure that there's lots of height on this, um, on this card. Um, that's one of the ways that I find it easiest to make these monochromatic cards interesting is to add lots of different levels of height. Um, and so I am using liquid adhesive. I'm using a double layer of foam adhesive in some spots. Um, so I'm just kind of nestling these flowers up into the sentiment and up next to the uh, foiled arch. And then I'm going to add a few platinum jewels, sparkling uh, platinum jewels from Pink Fresh's Essentials line using my pointy tweezers. And then we have a finished card. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will try using a uh, pigment ink with colored cardstock before doing your ink blending. I think that takes your your stenciled ink blending to another level. It's such a fun technique. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Thanks so much for watching. And if you liked the video, maybe hit the subscribe button so that you can see more content from us in the future. Have a great day. Bye.